It makes me want to kill myself! And take it with you! No! Fuck friends. Who needs them when you have Tetris and Diet Coke? I mean, they're both fucking awesome. There's a reason why both are milked constantly. Tetris was and still is a global phenomenon that's going strong every year with constant spin-offs. It's a simple yet incredible concept, and I find myself glued to it. For example, Tetris Effect Connected is an experience you simply cannot find in any other game. Puyo Puyo Tetris is such a weird yet lovely crossover that introduced me to the Puyo Puyo series. There's also Tetris made by Red Bull, which you can't play anymore. Tetris is a series that you see everywhere, no matter what. Doesn't matter if you're a dying horse, a social media, or a stick. Tetris is like the original Doom in that sense. It doesn't matter what device you're looking at, if it has a screen, it can run it. The Tetris brand has had a closer relationship with Nintendo, with Nintendo partnering with the Tetris company multiple times to make multiple exclusives on several of the systems. The original Tetris on the NES or Game Boy is a famous example, but so is Tetris 2. We don't talk about Tetris 2. So, with no friends and no time on my hand, I guess I should probably go with Game Boy Tetris right now. 1989 was an interesting year for the world. We got DuckTales, a classic platformer, Super Mario Land, a quirky platformer, and baseball for the NES. I've heard better. 1989 also happened to be the year where Tetris released on the NES and the Game Boy, introducing a lot more people into this wonderful franchise. I have the Game Boy version, in fact, since once my mother went to a Goodwill and came out with a little old cartridge. I love little old cartridges, especially when they're Tetris. This is Nintendo's first take on the Tetris IP and being the first true release of Tetris, after a dude called Hank Rogers retrieved the copyright for it. This was a back in title of the Game Boy, and this is possibly one of the greatest back in titles of all time. It's like Wii Sports in this regard. While the game is still great, it's also a great tech demo for what the system is able to do. While modern audiences might never want to take a look at Tetris Game Boy, I recommend that you do. It's an extremely important part of history. While I have no evidence for this part, it's probably a huge reason why the Tetris brand and the Game Boy became so successful. Both fed into each other for a future that is amazing. Tetris on the Game Boy is an incredibly bare bones version of Tetris. There's only two major game modes here that end up really feeling the same. Though if you take a second to critically think, then it makes sense. At the time of this release, the original Tetris released only a year ago, and this released on old ass systems. While future Tetris games would add various quality of life features, new modes, and just in general features that enhance the experience, I found myself really liking this version. I'll always choose any other Tetris any day of the week, but this doesn't make this one bad at all. This is Tetris in its purest form. Nearly a decade later in 1998, Tetris on the Game Boy would receive an enhanced version titled Tetris DX on the Game Boy Color. Alongside having proper color this time, this added three new modes and I have no idea what to think about it. There's Marathon. This is just Tetris with a fancy name. Ultra. It's just a timer. That's it. 40 lines? You're just supposed to clear 40 lines! Why not 50? The only interesting new mode here is versus computer. It's... not a lot, but at least it's meaningful. This is cool and actually changes up... something. This is where we have to play Tetris, both garbage coming down. It's not like other games in the future where you can stop it or even send garbage back. It's underwhelming. It's so underwhelming! Objectively, Tetris DX is the better version of Game Boy Tetris. There's more modes, new colors, and you can even make a profile. The new modes that are here don't feel too different, and when they try to do something new, there's just not enough there. At least with Game Boy Tetris, you knew it was there. But here, it's just advertising too much for something that's giving too little. At first, while I wondered why Nintendo just didn't add Tetris DX to Game Boy Online, I can kinda see why. It's because of nostalgia. Tetris DX also removed the iconic Tetris theme for music that doesn't feel too great. But hey, Tetris Attack is a weird game in a series with serious identity problems. This game was originally paneled upon on the Super Famicom. It's a cool anime puzzle game where you have to match three or more patterns in a row. It's awesome and it's massively underrated. This game resembles Tetris as much as I resemble Markiplier. There's no resemblance at all. I have so many things to complain about this stupid localization. Why is this called Tetris Attack? Tetris on the fucking Game Boy already has multiplayer where two players would attack each other. That was misinformation, but that tells you how angry I am. So the name's already stupid. None of this resembles Tetris. There are no blocks with four tiles. You have to match three tiles in a row. Not four, but three. Does this sound stupid? Because it is. Even though the name is stupid, one can understand why they changed all of this. For marketing, so that the game can sell better. Okay, I can accept that. 
Then why is Yoshi here? Why, why, why? Paltapon is great, and I desperately want to see it return one day, though I wonder if it ever will. The franchise has a horrible identity crisis, with the first one being the worst example. Paneled Upon isn't known for being an anime puzzle game, it's known for being a Tetris game that's not a fucking Tetris game, and being a Pokemon spin-off for some reason? Seriously? Why does Nintendo do this? Oh yeah, I forgot, to piss me off. Funnily enough, Tetris Attack was developed by Intelligent Systems, the developer of the Fire Emblem and WarioWare series. While there's nothing here that screams that this is Intelligent Systems, it's still pretty cool. Tetris DS is awesome, not just because it released on the same console as SimCity, but ever hear of this thing called the butterfly effect? This is everything that a Tetris game should be, and I adore it for all the 30 minutes that I've played so far. While the previous Tetris games that I covered are cool, they don't really scream Nintendo to me. Don't you dare mention Yoshi. Tetris DS on the other hand, is a love letter to Nintendo fans. Nintendo Entertainment System fans, I mean. For some reason, Nintendo is reaching to nostalgia, and I think it's actually pretty cool here. Getting to see various NES games with enhanced graphics just existing is pretty cool. Plus we get remixes of various songs, so there's a great reason to just pop a random mode in. And speaking of random modes, there are six main modes, and all of them feel so different. Most of them. Standard mode is just standard. What were you expecting? Push mode. I wasn't expecting football mixed with hell. Push mode is this weird mode where you have to go with another player or CPU, and it's up to you to push the other into a fiery abyss. I recommend it if you got nothing better to do. It's better than murder. Touch mode. Sounds bad out of context, and it's even worse with context. You have to remember, the DS was the start of Nintendo's weird obsession with forced touchscreen on games. We got it in Spare Tracks, Metroid Prime, and now this. Using a stylus is probably fine, but I'm a stupid kid with a Steam Deck and too much time on his hands. Touch Mode has two submodes in it actually, which I don't know why they did just split up for the main menu. More modes would have been great for marketing, but I don't know. This is the same company that sold a fucking solar panel for the Game Boy. Tower in Touch Mode is actually really good. It keeps the Tetris' base rules, with you needing to clear lines. The difference is time that you need to use a stylus or finger to move blocks, like a tower. No! Double tapping the blocks rotates them, which took me an embarrassingly long time to realize. I was wondering why I got stuck constantly. Touch puzzles similar to dots and boxes, where there are levels that are predetermined. There's over 15 total, and in touch puzzle, you gotta choose the right block to fill a line. It's like tower where you need to use a stylus, but now you're trying to fulfill a goal. It's just okay. In mission mode, there's a marathon and in time trial. Going with marathon. Don't, it's boring. It's just Tetris, but you're just playing it again and again with randomized missions that are even fun. Why would they even add this? And time trial is the exact same thing. It's just so boring. Finally, the most interesting mode here doesn't feel like Tetris at all. And I love it. Catch mode is exactly what it sounds like. You start with this cross block, and you have to catch Tetris pieces that are falling down, and you get points for... I don't actually know how you get points, but it's fucking awesome. And the one mode I see absolutely nobody talking about. If Tetris CS was just all these modes with nothing else, it would be pretty good. But it doesn't stop there. The entire aesthetic is focused on NES games, like The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, or Super Mario Bros. In your standard match, you can see Mario or some other character doing something. This is so charming to see these characters run around doing something. Especially when they aren't just the NES games lazily recorded. Now there's a Photoshop sky in the background. While it looks like I may have tons of time on my hand, that couldn't be further from the truth. I need tons of time for Xenoblade, so in order to milk this video for longer, I asked my friend Ventus if he wanted to talk about Tetris, and he actually did. And here we go. Tetris has never been a stranger to weird concepts, so I have no doubt the moment that the Tetris company saw Nintendo's 3DS, they immediately thought the possibilities of how they could bring Tetris to the handheld. From that, Tetris Access will be released in 2011, developed by both Hudson Soft and Bandai. I love Hudson Soft, they made the funny Marvel games, so I feel safe with them around. Bandai though, well, before 2012, Bandai was still able to develop games under that singular umbrella, until they seized the company's operations to focus on Bandai Namco. Right off the bat, we have an utterly baffling decision. Why does this game only support the D-pad? Like, look here, I'm pressing the circle pad, but it doesn't do anything, and this is true for everything else in the game. Sure, D-pad controls are what most are used to for Tetris, but even having the option would be amazing, but of course there's no option for it, so I guess it's what we have to deal with. Now, Tetris Axis was meant to be a huge game, with all sorts of different modes. To start off, there's Marathon, the classic Tetris mode, which is same as usual, aside from the me in the bottom screen. I should also mention the main theme rendition used in this game, as it's actually one of my favorite. It's called Koropiniki and Trepek. Korobiniki being the Russian song the Tetris theme was based on, but Trepek was a composition used for the Nutcracker. While seemingly a weird combination, it works surprisingly well and makes for a super fun song to clear blocks to. Shout out to Brian Diusente for his cool idea and also being the only thing in the development section of the Wikipedia page. The CPU battle mode has changed a lot here, 
While it's able to be about the same as before, they add an item feature that lets you collect items to mess up your opponents in different ways. These include sending meteors to destroy random blocks in your opponent's board, causing fog to cover your screen to which you must blow into the mic to get rid of it, or the objectively best item, one that swaps you and your opponent's boards. This one basically guarantees victory because if you just get to a point of no victory, you can just switch and have the CPU immediately lose. It's not very balanced. Also, you might notice, you're going against Bomberman here. It's always a cool detail having Hudson Soft include these older characters in these games. Although, for some reason, the other characters you fight after are these weird Bomberman reskins. I'm guessing they're either from the games, or are strange family members he doesn't like to talk about much. The other modes, Fever and Survival, are basic high score modes. Nothing that interesting. But the game also includes what it calls Party Modes, which is a huge collection of random minigames with their own gimmicks. Jigsaw, match the image below by dropping the blocks in the right place. It's okay. Shadow Wide, try to place the blocks as accurately into a shape as possible. Interesting idea, not into the execution. Fit, this is likely made specifically for the 3D gimmick, but it's actually pretty good. You basically have to fill in the gaps here before they get too close or you lose, and it can sometimes get hard finding the right placements. Tower Climber, a fun concept but can be a bit too simple and... Lose its intrigue early. Okay, I won't lie. Tetris Axis is the definition of a game with too many ideas and not many really stick. I'd have more patience to talk about them all, but the controls make this way more annoying than it should be. My hand cramps from using a D-pad, and I keep making missed inputs that I never feel like are my fault. So yeah, other than some neat stuff here and there, there is not much to bother with in this one. Maybe next time I'll get to talk about a better Hudson Soft game. Hint, hint. 2019 was an amazing year for Nintendo. We got amazing games like Astral Chain, a remake of Link's Awakening, and a whole lot of DLC for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We also got a Nintendo Switch Online exclusive game. That's pretty fucking rad. It's rad right until you realize how much it fucking hurts your hands. Tetris 99 was my first real foray into the Tetris franchise. While I did play a little on the Game Boy and a knockoff online, this was the one that truly got me into Tetris. Tetris 99 is a Nintendo Battle Royale where you have to fight against 98 other players. I myself have never been good at Battle Royales, and especially Fortnite. Tetris 99 though is a lot easier to jump into and it's freaking fantastic. It's still Tetris to a core, but with a really fun twist. There's only three modes here included with the Nintendo Switch Online, which is fine I guess. In Tetris 99, the mode, there's some options you can choose during combat, and these options determine which players or players you're going to attack. They're pretty self-explanatory except for KOs and badges. You get badges from knocking out other players. It's like arresting someone for using a knife to murder someone. Like, yeah, using a knife to stab someone is murder, but still, it's weird. The big reason to keep on playing Tetris 99 comes through its multiple themes, which are all unlocked through tickets. Although it's not super consistent, you can expect to see a new theme nearly monthly whenever there's a new game or whenever Nintendo feels like it. Seems like Chronicles 3 released in 2022. Its theme was released in 2023. That's weird. The themes are awesome, though there's a few things I had to complain about this system. Whenever there's an event, you're forced to use the event theme even after you unlock it. Why? You only get two tickets per day. Most themes you have unlocked cost 30, so it takes 14 days. And if you're busy, you may miss a day. And sometimes there's a mission where you have to KO multiple people in the game, and that's tiring. You can't unlock a lot of the previous collaboration. I want the Samus theme. Give it to me, Nintendo. Also, while themes are great, I wish they did more of this, and collaborations in general. I wish these themes were animated, or at least had animated elements. I know that this game has to deal with a lot, but this is a Tetris game! The Switch can handle it! Probably. Also, with events, I wish you could get profile pictures to use. I know in the grand scheme of things, none of this really matters, but hey, I'm a stupid Nintendo fan who wants more, so... Please let me complain. A few months after Treasure 99 was released, it was revealed that it was getting DLC called the Big Block Expansion. This DLC would add a variety of modes to the game, all of them offline this time. With it, you get Marathon, CPU Battle, Local Arena, and Two Player Share Battle. While I haven't gotten the DLC, the game is still pretty awesome, and the DLC seems to be the icing on the cake. Tetris is good. Fucking great, even. Whenever you think about video games, this is one of the games they're gonna think about. 40 years later, and Tetris is still going pretty strong. As of right now, the last new Tetris game we got was in 2021, that being Tetris Beat. And that's an Apple Arcade exclusive. I hope we get to see something cool, like maybe a 3D one. I know we already got one in the Virtual Boy, but it might be cool to see a new take on the formula, especially with more powerful hardware. Either way, after this, I want to play something new and unique, so gonna choose a random Tetris game, and... What the fuck?